Today's episode is sponsored by the Christian Standard Bible. The goal of the CSB is to be faithful to the original languages without sacrificing clarity, all the while maintaining both accuracy and readability. With beautiful designs and multiple study Bible options, everyone, from adults to teens to children, can find a CSB Bible that they enjoy. Learn more at csbible.com. Hey, what's going on, RTC family? Hey, just wanted to give you guys a heads up if you are... A big heads up. A, a, a big one. If you are uncomfortable with uh, certain adultish conversations and you have small children in the room, you might want to have them be removed from this converse, conversation because we're going to be talking about some pretty touchy things to some people and not so touchy to others. Uh, but it's a real conversation that we want to have and we think you should have, but we want to give you the option and just to, the have heads that, up, you to know. have that conversation with or without your children later on. But we want you to be able to preview this first. So if you have small children or tiny listening ears that you don't want to hear certain things. Or even things, better, you're listening to this in an Uber because we know we have some Uber ooh, driver friends. Yeah, you might want to <laughs> just wait. But either way, should we let them get to the show? Let's get to it. Let's go. Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And on today's episode of Real Talk Christian Podcast, we're sitting down with the one and the only Carl Thomas of Triple X Church to talk all about pornography and the church and how we can break free from those shackles. Fuller, you ready? Let's dive in. Let's go. Tell you what, buddy, I feel like a T-Rex right now. Yeah, well, I, I'm working on that, okay? <laughs> That's the next uh, studio purchase. So. Our YouTube, our wonderful YouTube people can see it, but I can't, like, my little arms can't reach the soundboard while talking to the microphone but while It's I'm nice because it's out of frame at least, it right? It is. Well, I guess people can't release it because it's, like, way over, it's, way it's, over it's, it's yonder. Dude, so. we have come a long way from the early days of the podcast, whereas you and me and oh. this old sketchy soundboard we found off of Facebook Which is Marketplace. over there? Is it somewhere? over there? Somewhere it's over there. Maybe. Or maybe it's upstairs. I can't remember. I think I don't know, I thought that was, was like a here. Facebook marketplace find, sketchy yeah. pickup at Walmart and right. pray it works. And right. Yep. Dude, now we got the studio with you and Janiel with our pretty sign and we're trying to get the quality of our video better and the audio better and just one day at a time. Little little bit more each week. You remember so. that old song, Little by Little, Inch by Inch? Sure. Nothing more. Yeah, you lost I don't me. know. It's, <laughs> it's an old independent fundamental Baptist church children's church song but either way guys welcome back to the show we are excited for this episode so excited you know we have been having a lot of fun over in our facebook group with the real talk christian podcast uh what do we call it just community Community. just the rtc community over on facebook yep and one of the big things we've been doing over there is literally been playing a lot of get to know you games because on this show, we do a lot of we know this each or other. That. We yeah. do you know questions of the box. So we know each other, but we want to get to know you, right? Because we do a lot of games where we interact with this generic game. So you guys get to know about us. But it's been so much fun learning about you guys. I didn't know that we have like butchers we have insurance agents we have people who work at restaurants we and have coffee spas. roasters we have coffee roasters that send us coffee because you bougie like because we, we drink bougie coffee this, we don't drink this no is, this is the good coffee right here we so, drink the good stuff i couldn't find his name but he oh, works for this company that's right embarrassing. and uh it's called helping missions uh from twin valley coffee biblical ministries worldwide and every purchase part of the proceedings of the purchase from the profits goes to support missionaries so we're tonight we're drinking the uh papa new guinea roast that he uh he roasted for so us, here's so. the real question what's that okay well first of all we're looking for a new coffee sponsorship just to throw that out there but th- where would you rank this on the order of coffee that we have dr- drank drunk have drunken on this show um, where, where would you rank this on the order it definitely has a a slight african taste it does i'd agree with that slightly one. it's not super muddy though no um, it's very, it's got good body mm-hmm. and light and airy is how I would describe it. 
I feel like you're describing something different besides coffee. That's kind of weird. Well, but I mean, it is what you're it hitting, is. You're right? hitting on your cup of coffee right that, now. That's, that's what you're doing. It's almost gone. Look at that. I'm going to I'm going to have gone. to refill it because we have a carafe down here, so. <laughs> I will say this this is very much near the well, top. And then, I would say I would put this near the top. I finally decided to crack open my no, you didn't. my nitro cold brew charbox that you got me from when I had covid a couple months ago. Oh, it's been sitting in my fridge, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So I'm going to drink it tonight. So it's nighttime. You've already drank a cup of coffee. Now you're drinking nitro cold brew. And then I'm going to dip it in the carafe a little bit more. Please tell me you have melatonin lined up for you to go to bed. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that any at some other day about should we melatonin our kids or not? Ooh. We do. So uh, needless to say, we want to make sure we don't waste too much time on this banter. So we want to get into the conversation as fast as we can. But before we do, we have another review to read as we are on our way to 100 Apple podcast reviews. We've already skyrocketed past that in Spotify. Oh, yeah. We're, oh, we're yeah. in the 200s now. Yeah, we're point. way past. But, you know, we're still pretty but faithful. Like, like We want to see the 100 mark hit on Apple iTunes review. And when we do, we will be giving away another swag bag of the 100 review swag bag filled with the mug, maybe a shirt, maybe a bag, maybe can some I, coffee. Can I just say congratulations to all of our listeners? We hit 19,000 downloads just this month. Woo! I mean, that's pretty good. So March. In March. I think, yeah, just March. So I think that we're... Our We're community up over 100, 130,000 downloads total time. And so, but yeah. most people are on Spotify. 70% of our audience are mm-hmm. like more is on Spotify. Yeah, which I is think nuts. we're up to what, 12% or 10% on What's on crazy iTunes? is the second most popular app to listen to RTC besides YouTube is Pandora. Mm. You old, old school Pandora. So our Pandora wow. people keep it hanging. But we got a review we want to read for you guys. Normally, I read the review. But would you like to read the review tonight? Sure. Fuller? Today, the review comes from Kelly underscore G1202. And the title is Awesome. I am so happy I found this podcast. <laughs> Sorry, I laughed the way you said awesome. I wasn't ready. Awesome. I wasn't ready. And uh, this next episode. No. Awesome. <laughs> I am so happy I found this podcast. Uh, I, like so many others, lately found your podcast on Spotify, and I'm so thankful I did. I love listening while I study, clean, and drive places. Um, how that, Did you lose your uh, spot? How do you study and listen and pay attention? That's what I want to know. But anyways, uh, this podcast has started some really great conversations with our within our household, and it's helped me and help my four-year-old daughter with her ever- curious and wickedly smart questions she has on God and the Bible. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to sit down and talk about faith, pressing topics from the Christian standpoint and answering questions people have. That's pretty cool, actually, about how it continues conversations, even with your four-year-old daughter. That is is awesome. And in here, I'm just going to throw this out there. This is freebie. Check out crossformkids.com. We interviewed Ryan Coatney back on episode like 74 or something like that, 75. Oh, I thought it was longer than that. No, it was was Andrew Wood from Hope Hope Resource Center in Knoxville about being pro-life after birth. And then Ryan Coatney, how to raise Christian kids. He just came out with these catechism flashcards. Oh over, yeah, over at uh, crossformkids.com. I remember you where it's literally just that. like who is like like who are you? I am a creation of God. Who is God? Who is G? Like all these basic questions, and it just helps you know question answer question answer. Oh, right there, right there, right there. Right where? Which one? Oh, oh, oh scroll, now you touch scroll it. down. Not, scroll down. Scroll down. This way. Oh, no, other way. Other way. All right. 73, oh, 73. 74 with Cody. 74. Yeah. All right. Nailed that, it. That's where I was trying to 74 find. 74 with Ryan. Coney. I was trying to make sure we had the right number. And if you ever want to find a show on, uh, you know, what one of any topic that we cover, just go to realtalkchristianpodcast.com, hit the little search icon, search whatever you want. And our database is huge of all right. the conversations that we have had. But we're not here to talk about past conversations. We are here to talk about today's conversation about pornography in the church and what just we can do about it. Because I don't know about you Fuller, but I had, I had seasons of struggles right. and, and struggles never go away, but I have talked with so many friends and buddies of mine and, and you know, Carl, who we'll, we'll bring him on here in a second. I know it's had so many, so many conversations around this because so many people find themselves literally just stuck, right? It's stuck. It's one of those things where, um, an addiction or drug or wh- whatever you want to call it of just, just the mess, just the mess right. of life. And, you know, people end up getting caught in this. And we've had a lot of conversations come to us on the show. And that's why I'm thankful that Carl's here with us of Triple X Church. Hey, Carl, welcome to the show, my friend. How you doing over there on the East Coast? I'm doing great. I mean, it's uh, Friday, so which means 
that's better than Thursday and <laughs> way better than Monday. Right. So See, okay, we've, good. we've had as, those conversations. Not as, not as good as Saturday, though. Saturday's is, glorious. Saturday, Saturday brunch, dude. Right. We have brunch every Saturday. Sleep in, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. Saturday's great. I mean, but th- I don't know. The weekend thing is a, it's one of those things where it's kind of like vacation, right? You right. Hit, you go on a seven-day vacation. You hit day three, and you're, oh, this is awesome. But then there's the downside of knowing that you only have three more days left. That, that is, <laughs> that is know, Friday, totally true. Fridays, I have the weekend still in front of me, right? So it's. It's all like, it's oh, it's all good wait. stuff. But see, yeah. I, I joke with it's Beth. Saturday, I'm like, ah oh, man, right. here we go. Got two more days. So, I'm a, I'm a big know. Tuesday guy. Tuesday is my favorite day. I love working. Yeah. I don't know. So because Mondays you have to get it get it back going after the weekend. And Tuesday, I'm not stressed that it's Friday deadlines are in here. Right. But it's still early in the week. Right. You know. Mm, so yeah. I enjoy Tuesdays. That's a good point. I'm a weird guy. I, I'm I enjoy doing great, Tuesday. Though. Good. That's yeah, awesome, we're, dude. We're glad. So real fast. Uh, Go for it. The eagle helmet in the back. Are, are you <laughs> yeah. an Eagles fan? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I gotta ask, dude. Is the Eagles like a childhood team? Because you're you're a big what fan? Are you? A, I'm are a, you? A, I'm a Bears fan. You're a Bears fan. Da Bears. Da Bears. Which is not really a team. So. Uh, <laughs> that's like the Flyers in Philadelphia. They're not a real team either. Oh, right. Right. Um, exactly. No, I, yeah, I, I've lived in this area my entire life, so I've uh, always been a a Philadelphia sports team fan. Um, definitely have had my ups and downs with certain teams. Like I only started really getting into the Phillies or watching the Phillies as much as I do because of my son. My son's like a sports nut. Oh, okay. Uh, but always like basketball and always love football. So yeah, I've always so, been a, always what, been a bit of a Eagles fan. Do you love the movie invincible about Vince? Papali? I was wondering, I'm just asking. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Mark Wahlberg, right? right? Isn't that Mark Wahlberg? I, I'm all about that movie, man. <laughs> I do like that movie. movie. It is a great Actually, movie. Uh, two Christmases ago, we bought my son as a Christmas present, got him a signed Vince Papali jersey. Oh, oh, that's, that's awesome. So that's last cool. sports question, because yeah. you're from, you said South Jersey, right? Yeah, yeah. Is is all yeah. the South Jersey Philadelphia fans are I feel like there's gotta be some love. I mean, no one loves the Jets, but a little love for the Jets or the Giants, you know? Ugh. Oh. That's more of a North Jersey thing. That's North Jersey, yeah, okay. So so New Jersey's kind of like it's like the north and the south, mm-hmm. right? You have North Jersey and South Jersey, and the two are nothing alike except for maybe the attitude a little bit. <laughs> uh, but they got that South Jersey. Jersey's pretty much yeah, South Jersey's dominated by Philadelphia sports for the most part. Right. With the exception of like a handful of loser cowboy fans out there. Oh, ah, they're, they're everywhere. They're, they're sprinkled everywhere. <laughs> they're like a cancer. So, <laughs> oh, I just defended all your cowboy fans. That's oh, all right. And North Jersey's dominated by New York teams. So All right. That's fascinating. I never knew that. I mean, I grew up right outside of Chicago. Yeah. I grew up right by the south side. So that's like the only little pocket in all of the world that actually likes the White Sox. <laughs> so yeah, I chose true. to like the Cubs instead because I didn't want to be like everybody else. Well, I'm a Tigers fan, so I'm really throwing everybody for a loop. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but oh either my. way, dude, Carl, yes. dude, we are thrilled to have you on the podcast, man. Well, that's only because you haven't talked to me that long. So. <laughs> well, we'll find out. But either way, dude, so we've had so many conversations with our listeners via text, via email, via you know private message in our Facebook group that we have, which I know if you're not part of the Facebook group yet, you need to be part of the Facebook group, people. Right. But we've had so many conversations, and it seems like a routine um, theme that comes up when people private message us is we had not, not so much girls. Uh, we have a lot of dudes who message us and they're talking about like, you know, I'm stuck in porn. I'm stuck in, you know, I I'm doing these things with my, with my girlfriend. I know I want to stop, but I really don't want to stop either. I, I, I know we all know what that feels like and all, all these different topics. And we've had to, you know, constantly have these conversations about just the fact of the, not, not just the dangers of porn, because I think most Christians know, oh, porn's bad, so it's bad, but it's really good, but it's bad. So all these struggles. And so with with you and your ministry, um, that's why we wanted to bring you on this conversation, because you with you know with Live Free and with Triple X Church, that's kind of your guys' game, isn't it? With just helping people break free from the shackles of porn. Yes, basically. that's that's I'd say that's uh, 90% of it. Well, on the Triple X Church side of things, we're, we're shifting – Shifting our focus a little bit as of late, but it's still, yeah, at the end of the day, the end game is we want, we want to help people get free of this stuff. That's cool. the end game. And, and we'll get into that conversation in so a little you, bit. Can yeah. you kind of t- 
walk us through the journey of, uh, you know, you started off with Triple X Church and then you went to, you know, started uh, Live Free and now they're combined. And yeah. you kind of walk us through the, the whole journey behind that. I won't walk you through the whole thing because we don't have time. <laughs> well, uh, it's actually pretty, pretty complicated story. Uh, Could have never scripted it out in a million years if I tried, but was in the insurance industry for 17 years, went to seminary uh, on this kind of hunch that God was calling me into ministry at some point, ended up leaving the insurance industry, got my first real quote unquote ministry job with Triple X Church. At the time, uh, the founder and executive director of Triple of Triple X Church was Craig Gross, so I worked for him and and his team. Uh, did a lot of stuff there. One of the main things that they brought me on for in the beginning was launching and running a online small groups program that we grew from one group with eight guys, literally, to today we have sixty plus groups and almost five hundred people oh in my it. Wow. Goodness. Um, so and all online and too, had right? Or at one point, all online, yeah, all mm. online. Man, we should back this and, up. Uh, Triple X so Church is not a church, right? I mean, we know that. It, no, we, we, we know get, that. It's an online we, movement. We that. It's not a. Yeah, I mean, honestly, technically, it depends. I guess theologically speaking, uh, you know, church is what the body of Christ is a group of people. So, right. since we foster communities, you could say we're a church, but no, we're not. We don't uh, we don't do communion, put it that way. There you go. <laughs> so you don't take part in the um, sacraments online. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, no no Sunday sermons or anything yeah, like that. Right. But um yeah, so I worked there on and off for about seven years. Uh, I say only on and off because I actually quit twice. The second time I quit, I ended up launching Live Free Ministries. Triple X Church was going through a transition where Craig was stepping away to pursue his own things, and we'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was done with them, started Live Free. We actually acquired ethically. I mean, it was a, it was a willing thing. I didn't hijack it, but we, we acquired the small groups program that I had mm. built and run with uh, AAA Search. So that was our first resource uh, with Live Free. And then we launched our community app for men. A year later, we then launched a community, online community for, for spouses. And then last March, we actually acquired Triple X Church. So wow. we we ended up taking that. So now Triple X Church is our website. And brought it all into the family. So is it technically Triple X Church is a live free ministry? Is that kind of the idea? Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. A project, live ministry, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I'll say sure. it threw me off because, you know, back in my days, I'm trying to remember what I said on the first like 15 recordings versus like in this one or whatever. <laughs> but, um, but you know, like as a youth pastor and even before I was a youth pastor, when I was, you know, dealing with my own porn struggles in, in college and in high school a little bit, you know, Triple X Church was one of the big names in the game. Like, right. you know, Covenant Eyes was always huge, yeah. always oh, big. It yeah. still is. And, you know, and, and I recommend that to a lot of parents and, um, bark is another great app by the way, but you know, triple X church was kind of that other platform though, that yes, they had the, like the internet blocking programs and the, uh, the firewalls and you can't do these searches on, on inside of this modem or, or whatnot. But what I thought was always really cool, especially for me as a youth pastor was triple X church was so much more than that. It was actually a resource and a platform where, I'll say you guys, because technically you own it. You guys were having conversations that people would, would bash and blush about inside of the four walls of the church, you right. know? And it yes. seems like, you know, with church, we're so scared to have these conversations, even though it's like, well, everyone struggles with porn, but just stop. Just don't do it. Like, we know it's bad, but just stop. We're not going <laughs> to talk about it, though, but just, like, go find somebody else to deal with that problem because we don't want to deal with it. And But you guys are stepping yeah. into that gap and into that fold. And I'm curious, do you have some story that we can talk about before we get you know into the other parts of the show of just some life change that you guys have found through Live Free and Triple X Church? Uh, what do you mean, like... It's personal like somebody oh no more of just like uh like like like, like 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 what are the goals are are people like actually finding hope oh. in this how do they find hope like that kind of stuff yeah yeah so um my over the seven years i was with triple x church we did a ton of stuff i mean put out a ton of workshops uh, a big focus of the ministry was always their accountability software x3 watch and uh, then we had the small groups program which was my baby. And mm -hmm. I really cared about that. And throughout the course of doing that for me personally, I always felt like the small groups program was where the most life transformation was happening. Cause people were meeting every week online. 
There were conversations happening. It wasn't like a workshop where a guy puts in his credit card, he gets access to quote unquote 15 life changing videos, and then you never see him again. And maybe he did all right, maybe he didn't, maybe he never even watched him. Who knows? Right. You know, small groups, it was it was living and breathing, and you could see the growth in people. Uh, so for me, that was always huge. And so doing that for seven years, I just became focused on this idea of, you know what? When I was at Triple X Church, I think we had it backwards. It was always, oh, get your accountability software and get the workshop. And oh, yeah, by the way, maybe you should sign up for a small group. And I mm. said, man, we got this thing backwards. It should be, hey, get in a community right. first. And then let's talk about individual accountability. Let's talk about some education, curriculum, whatever. Let's talk about counseling or coaching, and we can point you in the right direction. But let's get you in the community first and and uh, comfortable talking about this topic in the first place. That's really number one priority. So that's why we launched the app. And then when we acquired Triple X Church, I we kind of did a pivot move where I said, all right, you know what? I, I like what Triple X Church has been about to a, to a point. But I also want to change it a bit. And uh, I don't want to be, you know, okay, we're about prevention, awareness, recovery, blah, 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 blah. No, I want Triple H Church to be primarily about one thing. We're going to force this conversation. Right. And uh, we want to change. <laughs> I like that. We we're going to force the it. conversation. Like, we're going to have it. We just That's it. We just want to start talking about it because I'm, I'm convinced that, you know, you just look at the numbers and you look at, just look at the trends, right? When Triple X Church came around 20 years ago, 20 years ago, this will be our 20th year oh, as wow. a website. 20 years ago, nobody was talking about this, right? right? We were pretty much the first. And, and and like you said, for years, we were one of the only, us and Covenant and I were the only two organizations anyone knew about. So 20 years ago, it's safe to say there were next to no resources. No one was talking about it. No awareness, no anything. Right. 20 years later, there's a ton of organizations out here dealing with this stuff. There's plenty of resources. Some are good, some are garbage, but whatever. Uh, there's, but there's resources more out there now. Than ever. Right. Yeah. There's just, there's, it's, it's nothing like it was 20 years ago. And yet consumption rates are just as bad as they ever were. So for me, I'm, I'm like a numbers logic guy. Right. And I say, okay, something's not right here. If we've, filled the gap with resources. If we filled the gap with quote unquote awareness, if we're talking about it now, uh, you know, in, in like the cyber world, let's just say, you know, it's like, it is a conversation. Um, why isn't it any better? Mm -hmm. And for me, just as an outside observer or inside observer, I guess, cause I am, I do go to church. The one thing that really hasn't changed that dramatically in 20 years is our willingness to talk about these topics and these things as, as just normal conversation, right. right? Like just admit, Hey, masturbation, that's a thing, right. right? That's, that's, that's a thing in life, right? It's, um, not saying it's a great thing, but it's a thing like mm -hmm. porn. Okay. Porn, porn's a thing. It's a thing. We, it's a thing we deal with just like overeating, just like, uh, gambling, just like living check to check. Uh, just like having bad marriage. I mean, all these things, they're all things that we all deal with in life. It's, it shouldn't be something that we only talk about on Wednesday night in room one Oh five and annex B <laughs> where nobody right. knows about it. Where you know, the like, lights are off. It should not be like that. Yeah. So, so you're talking and, about uh, a, that's, that's, that's a thing. That's the thing that hasn't changed in my right. opinion. So that's what triple H church is about is saying, Hey, that's cool. Like, no, let's just talk about this. Like normal people. Like, so, yeah. it, this should not be so scary. Right. So you just came out with a new book, uh, When Shame Gets Real, a new way to talk mm -hmm. about sex, porn, and masturbation. Um, and in this book, at least from the, the little bit I've read about it, because I haven't gotten it yet, but I need to, uh, just to help other people that reach out to us, mm -hmm. um, you talk about a new way to talk about sex, porn, and masturbation. And why, why, do you, why do you feel like, I mean, obviously, we've, we've kind of broached the subject now about there's not really a, a lot of good conversations outside of room 105 on a Wednesday night. <laughs> um, but obviously we see that the, the numbers of, of cons, you know, consumers going to pornography websites, there's more pornography websites more than ever. It's more easily accessible compared to 20 years ago. Well, now it's becoming popular even with other channels where it's like porn stars are becoming just, you know, they're, they're showing up in the, you know, all these various videos, what is it, Dan Dorjic or whatever. And like, 
the Logan, like Logan Paul and all that. Like people are trying to make it look normal and okay. Right. So, so uh, why do you feel we need to, to really hit hard on these subjects now and talk about them openly? Uh, because it's just a part of life. I, I, I say it's funny. Um, we have an event and we haven't talked about it or released any details on it yet, but it's, it's going to be called shameless. And, uh, the, t- the tagline is normalizing the sex and porn conversation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, normalize is one of those words when you hear it, it's, Oh, what do you, are, are you saying that it's okay? No, that's not what normal means. There's a lot of things that are normal that aren't healthy, right? <laughs> right. It's normal to get mad and give someone the middle finger in traffic, but it's not a good thing, right? But it's pretty normal yeah, you right. know, across the landscape. I'm not saying I do. I'm a I'm a saint in traffic, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you got that Jesus sticker on the back of your car. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. I have the. I have like 80 fish on my bumper, <laughs> and I never. Those are always the worst that. drivers, but though. Those are always the worst drivers. Some hip, some hypocritical Christians would, <laughs> and um, yeah. So, but but in all seriousness, like it's it's normal, right? right? So again, going back to what I said a few minutes ago. Listen, people struggle with with their eating, their their food choices, their diet, right? Their 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 health. People struggle with health. I mean, people are on more meds than ever, right? That's kind of normal. It's not healthy, but it's normal, right? Um, people. I'd say more, the majority of people in America, at least, are living check to check. That's mm. not healthy, right? You should have a savings account, right. but it's pretty normal. Mm-hmm. And so we got no problem having our finance, you know, financial freedom workshops, uh, you know, hosted by Dave Ramsey or whatever. And we have no problem doing that. Uh, we have no problem talking about, uh, you know, health or uh, even marriage, although honestly, when you hear a when you hear a church have a marriage conference or a marriage seminar, it's usually pretty tame. So mm-hmm. uh, that's a whole nother story. But <laughs> we have no problem talking about these things. Uh, but when it comes to porn, sex, masturbation, ah, man, that is that is super weird. No, it's not. It's normal. Uh, it's not good, but it's normal. Right. Like we just need to we just need to get over it and realize, yeah, you know what? A lot of people look at porn. A lot of people masturbate. Uh, your kid is probably going to see porn. Right. 99% chance your kid's going to see porn and uh, very good chance too. Your kid's going to masturbate unless you talk to them about it in a healthy way and, and explain to them that the repercussions of it, like, like all this stuff is it's out there and mm. just putting the, you know, hiding your eyes to it or avoiding the topics is not, is not helping anybody. Right. It's like burying your head in, in a, a sandstorm. It doesn't make the sandstorm go away. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's going to happen no matter what. Right. That's the thing. So it's, do you want it to happen on your terms or their terms? Mm. Right. You know, I get, we get parents coming to us all the time. Man, I don't know if I want to talk to my kid about that. Okay. Well, don't. Somebody's and going you know to. What? Someone else will. Right. Right. Someone else will. Guaranteed. It's going to happen. So you have a choice. You can either try to explain to them what's, what healthy sexuality looks like, what holy sexuality looks like, or you can let somebody else do it. Right. Your choice. So let's lean into but that a little bit, happen. you know, because you talk about like uh, when shame gets real, because we all have the shame that we feel when things get caught, but you talk about the new way. Mm-hmm. So how would you describe the new way versus the old way and why we need to change that conversation? Yeah, it's shame free. Uh, shame free is, is the new way, right? Because there is so much shame surrounding sex and shame is honestly, uh, when it comes to just sexual struggles in the first place. Shame is a prime catalyst. I mean, sometimes a lot of times in the recovery world, and I'm, I'm guilty of this two years ago, the thought process was always, Hey, get free of porn and you don't have to live with the shame anymore. Mm. And it's, no, it's not really like that. Shame mm. is what drives most people on some level. Uh, that's what drives people to porn in the first place, right? Is because they're looking for an escape from this stuff. And then of course their behavior multiplies the shame they feel because now they not only feel shame about the original thing they felt shame about right well i'm a i'm a crappy kid i'm this i'm that but now they also feel shame about their choices Mm -hmm. and so it just feeds each other right so now i feel more shame and since i feel more shame what am i going to do with it well i'm not uh, emotionally healthy enough to deal with it so i'll just go look at more porn and Mm -hmm. forget about it Mm -hmm. and oh crap now i feel like and that's just a that's 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 a vicious cycle you know Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, it's one of those things where, um, I think I told someone this before, but yeah, you, you start a fire, you put kerosene on the fire, right? Mm-hmm. 
fire lights up with wood, right? And then as long as there's enough wood, it, it keeps going. But could you imagine if you put kerosene on a fire, the fire actually produced more kerosene, mm. right? Like that's that's what you're dealing with, right? right? It's like the shame is what creates the fire, but then the fire creates more shame, which then feeds the fire. It's just this never ending cycle. Uh, and then that translates not only into our behaviors, but it translates into the way we talk about these things in general, husbands and wives, you know, uh, our sex life isn't where it should be. We're, we're having problems with sex. Um, why, why don't you talk about it? Because there's a shame aspect to it, right? It's, oh, I, I don't know. I feel uncomfortable. I feel, I feel embarrassed. I feel shameful that this is a situation. Like we need to, we need to be able to talk about these things in a healthy way without the shame. So how would you say, and I want to lean to this a little bit, you know, Yes, we need to remove the shame, but how do we do that? And then what should those conversations even look like? Well, I mean, I can't give away everything. You got to buy the book. But, uh, <laughs> that true, means no. true that salesman. Means, <laughs> that means we're good question askers, man. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, listen, it's not easy. Right. There's nothing easy about it. I will, I'll, I'll share something with you that this, this is pretty interesting. This is in the book. Uh, and I, Forgive me, I don't have the data in front of me, so I can't give you the specifics, but this is pretty wild. If you say, you don't have to do it now, do it do it on your own time, right? Um, elbow, fire hydrant, milk, whatever, right? Just say random words. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what? Then say vagina, penis, clitoris, you know, some sexual terms. Th there's th no doubt you feel a little different about those words, right? Oh yeah. yeah. There's, there's, there's a different, there's a, a, a different mental shift that you get where you're like, Oh, we, we're not supposed to be talking about it. Right. This. So it's like, why does it, why does it feel, why does it literally feel weird to say vagina, but not weird to say elbow. And the reason is because it literally feels differently. Uh, there was a study done. It was an experiment. I think, I think it was somewhere in Asia. Um, but, but they took, they took a sample of people. They hooked them up to electrodes that measured the electrical electrical impulses in their skin, hmm. and they had them say a bunch of generic words, right? Then they had that same group of people say a bunch of curse words, not sexual words, but still basically socially inappropriate words, mm -hmm. right? And the electrodes picked up a higher electrical uh, frequency or more electricity passing through the skin when they said these other words that are not okay to say. Hmm. And so, well, why is that? Like a word is a word, right? It's just vowels and consonants, right? I think consonants, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's all, it's, it's because culturally we've built ourselves up to see these words, these topics as off limits when they really shouldn't be. And so how does it happen? It happens over time, right? It happens with saying, okay, hey, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to shy away from this thing, even though right now I kind of feel like I want to. Mm. It's having that conversation with your son about masturbation. When you think, my gosh, he's only 12. If I talk about masturbation, the first thing he's going to go do is beat off, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, that's my biggest hide. fear. That's 100% right. my biggest fear. You got to have the talk, right? Because he's going to do it anyway. If you don't, Right. And so, I mean, my first, uh, I talk about this in the book too, but my first, my first conversation about masturbation, I talked to my son about sex and porn years ago, but my first conversation with my son about masturbation, the, the conversation literally opened with, so let me tell you about when dad first masturbated. That was my conversation with him. And, uh, you know, he was, what? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't believe it. I was like, yep, I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw it out there. And I told him. And then we got into it and I explained what masturbation is. And I, I openly admitted, I said, Hey, listen, if you ever do it, it's going to blow your mind, but here's the problem. And then we got into it and, uh, I didn't explain it in academic terms, but got into the brain science about it and explain them why this is a problem and why our brains bond to the things that give us pleasure. And mm -hmm. Hey, when you have a bad day, what do you do now? Why well, go shoot hoops? Is that healthy? Yeah, it's great. I get to work on my basketball game. Exactly. Now imagine if you masturbate and your brain says, hey, you know what? Screw hoops. Let's go masturbate. That feels a hundred times better. Do you think every time you have a bad day, it's healthy to run up into your room, lock the door, turn off the lights and masturbate your brains out? No. No, that doesn't sound healthy, dad. Exactly. 
exactly. That's the problem, you know? So, but those are uncomfortable conversations to have for sure, at least in the beginning. And uh, we just got to have them. And then over time, you'll be surprised how much easier it is to talk about this stuff. We talk about sex and stuff like that in our houses. I mean, because of the field I'm in, it's, it's well, I'm sure that's helpful a little bit. bit. Yeah. But we talk about that stuff all the time and, and it's, it's a very, you know, our kids know that if they have an issue, they can come to us and it's just, okay, so we're talking about penises around the dinner table. Great. What's going on? Yeah, not <laughs> Let really, me keep but. eating my brat right now. <laughs> and we, and we do that at our house too, you know, because we have so many kids and like, I don't know, I, I know you don't know my story very well, but you know, five of my daughters, we, they were all long-term foster care placements that, had, you know, TPR, uh, termination parental rights. My wife adopted them and the, the oldest two, specifically the oldest one had to go through legitimate, like, Beth, you can correct me on my terminology, but basically she had to have sex deprogramming therapy because her mom did yep. not good things in a studio apartment. And so uh, my uh, when she was four, she knew more about sex than my single now wife who was 24 years old. And she, my wife was learning things from the four-year-old and she's like, this is not okay. So for us with the trauma that's induced, we, we lean into those conversations but it doesn't make it easy either. I mean, it's, these are some of those uncomfortable, awkward conversations, but you know, they're at least normal to the point where, yeah, this is just stuff we talk about and have those conversations. But in, in your opinion, Carl, do you think some of the, uh, cause you know, there's a lot of slams. We talked about the purity culture, even sure. on this podcast. Yep, yep. Do you think the purity culture had a big, big, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not reason a big, big part to play in the shame culture that we now have. Uh, yeah, I would say for sure. I mean, Yes. Um, I mean, I think that stuff's been around for years. This is it's one of those things where it's kind of we, especially in a church world, but when it comes to how we talk about sex and masturbation and all these things, it's it's we, we just like to re revisit the, sin, the sins of our father, right? Mm. My dad didn't talk to me about sex and porn and masturbation, and his father didn't talk about him, and his father didn't talk to it about him. And this stuff just goes on and on and on until you break the cycle and get someone talking about it. But purity culture, absolutely. Let's, I don't even want to say did still does. There's still plenty of it out there mm -hmm. like that stuff. Yeah. It, it can become pretty toxic. And the problem with purity culture, in my opinion, I actually talk about this in the book. Too. Gosh, this is like a big plug fest. I apologize. <laughs> no, that, no, 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 but that's right. what we want, bro. You're the expert. I mean, maybe you, you, but, you don't have to say, but we think you're the expert. That's why I want you in this conversation, yeah. man. You can plug that book away. I prefer sexual integrity over purity because there's, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with the word purity, right? There's nothing wrong with the idea of being pure, but we, as, we ascribe certain definitions and assumptions to that word that don't really belong. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like how Christians handle the word holy, right? Mm. When you when you grow up in a like in a household I grew up in, be a holy man in your mind that meant sinless, but that's right, not yep. really what holy means. Holy is set apart. Right. Uh, it 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 means different. Uh, Tim Mackey, I don't know if you ever listened to him. He's I love Tim Mackey stuff, but he talked about you know holy spaces. He says, listen, the bathroom's holy. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> He says, you don't do things in your kitchen that you do in your bathroom. Oh, heavens and no. vice mm -hmm. versa, right? right? They're set apart for a specific purpose. We're a holy people because we're set apart for a specific purpose. So, you know, purity is kind of this thing where we hear purity and it means don't touch, don't do this, don't do that. No, it's, it's much bigger than that. Um, just because you don't touch your penis, never looked at porn, and don't sleep with uh, your girlfriend or boyfriend does not mean you're pure. You could still be mentally like, up here. You could be one of the biggest you know, right. uh, perverts. I hate that word because it's so shamey. But regardless, you know what I'm saying? Like you could be thinking horrific things and just not acting on it. That's right. not pure. But purity, that's that's what is built around. It's like this idea of, well, I, I as long as I'm a virgin, I'm pure. It's crazy that, and I'm sure you guys have heard this, but um, there's been studies on this where middle schoolers and high school girls, especially, uh, they have anal, they'll have anal sex before regular sex. Right. Cause that doesn't that count. They can stay a virgin. Right. Cause right. that doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I've heard that crap. Or, or, oral, yeah. oral sex and everything what? else. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, and that's not a rumor. Right. That's literally that's, there that's are, real life. I've read the journals on them, the scientific academic journals on them, peer reviewed journals. This this happens. This is happening. Right. And then so yeah, that I think the purity culture has really, really done a lot of damage that mm. it didn't need to do, you know, but it is what it is. So what should the church do instead? Like, you know, like I was very careful how I did it, but what should us as the church do then where we don't want to create a shame culture. We want to create conversations. We want to create groups where there's accountability, but is there like a, a bulletproof method of this is what the church, this is like the one thing the church can do, or is it more of a, a whole bunch of different things coming together? Like what's your opinion on that? It's probably not going to sound very popular, but first of all, let's just say this. There is a bulletproof method, but, and it's way too, it's very simplistic. The problem is no one wants to do it. And that's, let's just, let's just talk about the way it is and, and not worry about it. Right. I know it doesn't look, I mean, I'm a strapping guy, but I'm 50. Right. <laughs> and um, you're old compared to us, my friend. Listen, <laughs> dude, us old guys, it's too late. Like I, I know that sounds negative. I'm not saying you don't keep pushing for change and you don't keep trying to do it. And that's why triple X church is here. Cause we want to keep pushing this conversation. But the reality is for my generation, it's probably too late. Like, no one's going to change overnight, mm, mm-hmm. but the, the young ones coming up, the teens, the kids, my age, like that can change. If the, if the, if the parents are willing to talk to the kids and educate them on what healthy sexuality really looks like, what is the purpose of sex? And is, listen, it's not just God wants you to have a good time, but only if you're married, there is actually reasoning for this, like pretty logical reasoning when you think about it, like what is sex just a fun thing to do or does it actually serve a really important purpose in our life? Um, like having those conversations. So when our kids get older and they step into these leadership positions, they say, no, we're not going to hide away from this topic. Let's just talk about it. It is right. what it is. Have the real know? conversation. That's it, man. Yep. I mean, it is simple, but it's really hard because no one wants to do it. Right. You know, but it is simple. It's just, I'm just going to talk about it. So let Whatever. me ask you this. Don't ever then. invite oh, me to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just did, homie. We, uh, we invited you into people's breakfast right now. Awkward. Yeah. I mean, I'll talk about it. Drop a hat. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> but that's. Buyer beware, don't invite me anywhere. <laughs> you don't want to get I love it. Well, let me ask you this question then, and we'll start to land the plane here in a minute. There's a lot of people who listen to this show where, you know, they're probably young adults, early 20s, um, and they're they're like, okay, I'm already past youth group. I'm not part of these youth groups anymore. I'm trying to get replugged back into a church. And a lot of times, you know, I know Matt Chandler is a big proponent of the board man is the most dangerous man because the board man is the man who does, you know, he's bored and he goes and figures out what to do, and it's not always good. But what would your encouragement be to somebody who's listening to this show right now that find themselves in that late teens, early twenties, maybe even mid twenties. And they're like, I'm just stuck in this cycle. I tried everything. I don't know what else to do. Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing I would tell them is go find some community, like healthy, supportive community where you can start having these conversations. Cause that's when a lot of the, um, a lot of the things will start clicking, right? You'll start figuring things out. The problem is by and large, and it's, it's crazy to think this because again, 20 years later, uh, a lot of the content out there is so much better than it was years ago. It's not just bounce your eyes anymore. Like you have authors out there like Jay Stringer, who has great books talking about the deep psychological, emotional aspects of of these mm-hmm. behaviors and, and why we go to them. Right. Uh, but shockingly, the I would say the average Christian man still has no clue. Like when it comes to especially he might not have no clue, but especially when it comes to why they struggle with porn. Mm -hmm. Most guys still think it's a sex thing. It's a, it's just a, I don't have enough self-control thing. Uh, you know, that's, I'm just horny thing. Like most guys still think that. And it's no, that's not it. It's so much more than that. And, um, if you keep trying to beat this thing by just getting better at controlling your behavior, you're going to be fighting this for the rest of your life. Mm. It's just a losing real. battle. Yeah, you you need to understand that this stuff comes from, and yes, there is the spiritual component, but again, in the church, I'm, I'm not bashing church, but we like the spiritual, physical, uh, you know, psychological, we like to separate all these things. I got news for you. Even though, yes, there are, there are, psychologists psychologists out there that want to you know crap on 
the theological aspects of things and and uh, you know make it all about this. The reality is you have an intelligent God who who built everything in a very intelligent way, and it all works together for a reason, mm -hmm. right? It all works together for a reason. There is no separating emotions and psychology and all this stuff from theology and what we believe about God because it all works together. The reason that we run to this stuff is because of emotional issues. We just don't know how to handle the pain in our life that has been heaped upon us year after year after year because we live in a relatively broken world, right? And mm -hmm. so we've grown up in broken family situations and broken friendships. And we've been force fed a lot of lies about our value and where our value derives from and things like this. And all this just builds up and it's, I mean, I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know how to, I don't know how to talk about this stuff. This is too much. I'm going to go unplug. I'm going to go masturbate. I'm going to go look at a porn star and feel better for the next 20 minutes and then feel like crap for the next three days, but whatever, at least I'll feel better now. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta understand it. It's so much deeper than just you're horny or you're just have no self-control. It's so much deeper than that. Uh, and you can have these healthy productive conversations in a healthy community. That's where a lot of this stuff can at least start to take form. And with having a healthy community, are there community groups that, because we have some listeners that reach out to us and they're like, I'm, you know, I'm new to an area. I'm trying to find a new church, this, that, the other. Are there open communities right yeah. now that people can join with you over at Live Free? Yeah, we have, uh, so we have, we have small groups online. So smallgroupsonline.com. Those are weekly support Basically, they're video-based support groups where you have a train leader, eight to 10 people. It's the same guys week after week. I mean, if people come and people go, don't get me wrong, but it's not its not just a new 10 faces every week. You're, you're, with a, you're with a group of guys that are all committed to this. We have groups for women and we have groups for spouses as well mm. who are kind of working through healing from sexual betrayal, right? So we have groups for all that. Uh, and then we also have the Live Free Community. So that's livefreecommunity.org. And that is specifically for men. And yeah, that's an online app-based community where we have plenty of content, free workshops. I and mean, we give them the curriculum and the content to help guide them in the right direction so they don't stay ignorant. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not saying ignorant in a negative way, you know what I mean? But I mean right. literally ignorant of what this stuff is, what what the stuff they're dealing with is really about. Sure. Uh, but the secret sauce of live free is the community. It's mm. all the men in there who are willing to be honest about what they're dealing with. And, you know, it's just amazing how many guys I see their first post and they say, man, I've never done anything like this. Like they've never talked about this with anybody. And they, they get to experience, even though they're not free from their addiction or free from their pain in that community, they can at least experience a level of freedom in the fact that, hey, here's a place where I can actually be who I am. Mm -hmm. I can be known for who I am, good or bad, and I'm still going to be accepted and encouraged and loved and, yeah, challenged, but I can be me, and I, I don't need to pretend here. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great thing. So both of those are available, yes, now. You know, if you, if you act now, you know, <laughs> For Back three now, three easy payments, so we'll, <laughs> we'll throw in a set of steak knives too. There, there you so. go, <laughs> <laughs> the Ginsu steak knives. Oh goodness! Yeah. Yes. Real well, I didn't want to say Ginsu because they might be pricey. I might have to go yeah. to the dollar store. Right? There you go. <laughs> there you go. Get the dollar, Walmart. The Dollar so, Tree. I didn't, say, I didn't want to lock myself <laughs> into a name brand. You know? I love I it. it. So I got one more question. So I know we have sure um, some underage young men that listen to this podcast and have reached out yeah. about the struggle of masturbation and of pornography <clears throat> is there a community where mm. if they don't feel safe to be able to connect with people that are around them is there a community yeah. or can they get it with live free or is this like what teenagers you 18 mean? or older kind of thing right. i mean that's it's, it's a sticky situation yeah. i know and even when i'm answering these questions it's like if you got a good relationship with your parents go talk to your parents and if you don't go talk to your pastor and <laughs> that's kind of the encouragement so that many i people have so. like a youth pastor who want to talk about it right so yeah, what would be your advice? That is the reality of right. uh, we we actually we do something called office hours on Triple X Church where people submit questions and I answer them on video and they're not scripted out or anything. Like sure. I literally the only thing I script out is the question and then I just answer it on the fly. Right. And uh, so the best you know, thing is maybe bad. they they send you a question through that or something. <laughs> oh, I mean I get some bizarre ones. And right. I, hey, look, 
I promise, no no questions off the table. I'll answer it if you ask it. So I've a, I've I've been asked some crazy ones and I've answered them. But just I think it was a week ago or two weeks ago we uh, we aired an episode where that was the thing. the The parent was asking, "Are there resources for teens, or why aren't there enough resources for teens?" And I, I had to tell them. I said, "Listen, the reality is in the online world, it's very difficult to do anything specifically for kids. A because Legality. Well, let's get the <laughs> let's get the obvious one out of the way. You need a credit card for almost anything. Well, that's right? true. So that's it's hard true. for it's hard for a kid to get because they don't have a credit card. Right. But yeah, like even with our state, in our community, it would be a really bad idea to have a 13 year old porn right. addict in a community with a 27 year old porn addict, especially if you have guys in that community who are also maybe possibly dealing with same sex attraction. Right. You know, or you have like that's just a that's a nightmare, right. right? I talk about a legal nightmare. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's just, you no, know, it's just, it's disaster. So online makes it really, really difficult hmm. uh, to foster any sort of thing like that. And yeah, unfortunately, the answer is, I said this person, they said, what are there some resources? I gave them some books. What was mine? And then, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> and then I also said, you know what? You know what? Here's a great resource. You, you're a great resource. Right. You're a great resource. If if you can build that rapport with your kids and build that trust with them and let them know that mom and dad aren't going to freak out every time you have an issue, you can be a great resource, mm. right? They can, but they need to feel safe with you and they need to feel like they can trust you. And unfortunately, a lot of parents start these conversations so late in the game that the kids are already thinking to themselves, well, why would I trust you? If, if you cared enough about this topic, you would have talked to me about it five years ago when Billy talked to me. Right. You know, so that is the challenge. But I would say, yeah, unfortunately, in an online world, your parents, maybe your youth pastor, hopefully, maybe yeah, right. a local group of younger kids. If you have a leader that could be in person that could lead it, that's mm. probably the only options out there. Now, what age do you think parents should talk to their? I mean, obviously, sooner is better. But what what would you yeah. say is a safe age to be like? You know what? If you're at this point, you got to do it as soon as you can. I mean, I I talk to yeah, just you got to use some wisdom, right. right? I mean, if the kid is just clearly not, I don't want to say mentally uh, ready, but uh, lack of better words, right? Emotionally, whatever, cogn whatever you want to say, like. If they're not there yet, no need to rush it, right? Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to go to your four year old and say, So let me talk <laughs> to you about masturbation. Right. Like that's what's you're that, Daddy? A little <laughs> right. Little aggressive there, right? right? Uh, but I talked to my son, I wanna say I had my first talk with my son, I wanna say it was six or seven. Um, and it was great. I mean, we <laughs> I took him out to see Ant Man. Uh, yes, I took my son. He was seven, but I knew Ant Man was a fine movie. There were just some curse words, and he was fine with that. <laughs> and then after Ant Man, we went to uh, TJI Fridays. I don't know if you have a TJI oh, Friday. Oh yeah. yes, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, like maybe they'll maybe they'll throw you a couple of dollars for like a sponsorship. But um, <laughs> yeah, went to TJI Fridays and sat down and started talking to him. And I said, so you know, let me talk to you about. And I was, you know, the minute I used the word sex and penis. His he eyes was lit up. The races oh. <laughs> oh no, he just loved the word penis. That was hilarious. <laughs> and uh, the the poor family. There was like a husband, a wife, and some kids <laughs> like table next door. And I was like, look at him, I'm thinking to myself, boy, you didn't sign up for this, right? <laughs> 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 like, they're, they're trying to eat their riblets and ignore our. Welcome to the Dallas family. I'm about penis. So when Daddy and Mommy close the door at night, what what happens is, right. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know what? That was the first talk, and then we've had many talks ever since. That's cool. And that's that's really what it is. It's not just one talk, or even you say it's not one talk; it's many talks. But honestly, it, it's beyond that. It's not even just many talks. It's about making it just part of the average conversation. It's just part of family life. Hey, we talk about sports. We talk about cooking. We talk about cleaning your room, um, and yeah, we also talk about sex sometimes. Right. And that's just part of family life. Whatever. Awesome. Well. We're going to give you, we're going to land the plane here, but we're going to give you one more opportunity to plug yourself in here. See, <laughs> you like, you like that? We're going to give you a whole, however much time you want to plug in, how people can get a hold of you, how they can connect with you, your book, you guys' website, the things okay. you do. So, all the things. Off to the races for you, sir. Yeah, I would just say to keep it simple, 
links to basically all our resources. Everything we offer is right off the triplexchurch.com homepage. So if you go to triplexchurch.com, we have links to our small groups program. We have links to the app. Uh, we have links to our video course. We have links to all that. We even have links to the book. If you just want to check out the book, go to whenshamegetsreal.com and uh, you can you can actually read a preview of it. You can download the first chapter for free or you can just click a link and buy it. So that would be, I'd say those two things are the best ways to get a hold of us. Okay. That's awesome, man. But dude, Carl, before we let you go, we're going to bring you into one of our favorite parts of Real Talk Christian Podcast. To give you a little history, we do something called Fun Facts with Fuller every single episode. It all started on the very first episode. We were very awkward. We didn't know what we were doing and we didn't know how to land the plane. So I was like, uh, Fuller, do you, do you like a fun fact to end the show? And he just had a pulling out of his butt. And ever since then, we do fun now facts. Prepare. Now you prepare. <laughs> but now we have fun facts with Fuller. We're at like what? Well over 140 fun facts. Uh, You've had to kick out. Over 160, I think, is what we're is at. Is that where we're at now? Yeah. All, all I know is he's only repeated them one time. I caught him on a, I caught him on a slip. It's a lot of research to find these facts. But either way, man, let's do some fun facts with Fuller. You ready? All right, I'm ready, man. Time for... Fun facts. <laughs> and those are your beautiful kids, my dear sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to end the show, Fuller, dude, what fun fact do you have to send us on our merry way? All right, the fun fact of the day is, did you know that supermarket apples can be a year old by the time you get to them? Oh, dude, no. Yeah, no. these weird facts might have you no. changing the way you eat. Those fresh, quote-unquote, apples aren't always fresh per se. They're usually picked between August and November, covered in waxed, hot air-dried, and sent into cold storage. After 6 to 12 months, they finally land on your grocery shelf uh, at a store near you. So that's... Uh, so these are not, so my pink ladies that I eat every single day are not fresh. They are not fresh. They're like six to, six to 12 months old. I will say the nice thing about us living so stinking close to Michigan. is come fall. It's is fresh during apples. the fall. We get fresh them. and, and it's, it's honey crisp apples, apples oh, for yeah. like what? 50 cents a pound. Yeah, it's something like that. It's crazy cheap. I, I eat like three apples a day, so I'm here for the, I'm here for the fall. But either way, guys, dude, Carl, it was an absolute pleasure having you on the show again, man. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. By the way, I just want to say you might want to rename that segment because that was not a fun fact. That was, <laughs> that was depressing. That, Are you a little that, depressed now? That fact like scared me and depressed me. I'm He's like, like I eat apples like, all oh the gosh, time. How many apples? <laughs> how many year old apples have I eaten? That is disgusting. But so look, I don't know if that's a fun fact. But, but just whatever. look, look at your physique. Thing. It's just helping preserve you, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. See, fun it's fact. All the wax. Yeah, it's all the wax. <laughs> You're a wax figure now. <laughs> Good. Oh, I don't even know how to. That. Wow. That. Now, see, now that's a fun fact. How about that? Go, that's see? a fun fact. <laughs> Goodness. Well, just like always, guys, we say this at the end of every episode. We would be honored if you left us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. We're getting close to that 100 download mark. Yes, we are. And over on Spotify. But you can get all the links to everything Real Talk Christian Podcast over at realtalkchristianpodcast.com, where you can find the email address, the phone number, the Facebook, the Instagram, the YouTube. Hopefully, the store will be up and running because our store uh, literally blew pooped, up. It, it, well, it pooped out on us. We were just losing stuff all the time and we were never notified. Right. So we're working on getting that store back up, but we would love to continue this conversation. So if you have more questions that you would love to ask us, feel free to text us at 574 574- 4005352 or go to the website, scroll down the homepage, fill out that contact form right there. That's it, buddy. So, Fuller, anything else that we got to tell these lovely people before we let them go? Just go check out When Shame Gets Real by Carl Thomas. I love it. Well, dude, Carl, again, thank you for joining us on the show, man. Thank you. Awesome. Well, guys, until next time, then. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs>